Welcome to our community worship, Holy Communion service, the tenth Sunday after Tuesday. During the service after each hymn is announced, we will allow time for you to change the usual link if you choose. And after the micro readings are announced, we give time for you to complete some. We use the new international version, UK edition. We begin our service with a hymn to the cause to worship. Here is love vast as the ocean. And the psalm for the day is Psalm 133, a song of ascents of David. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard down to the colour of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to fear our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And so we pray the St. George's Prayer. Our Father, as individuals and as a community, may we come to know and love you more and more. May we feel your love and care through each other. May we be witnesses to Christ wherever we are, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, may we be attentive to you, to our neighbor, and to your world. Song of celebration, beautifully free. Some discovered that God's not dead, he is alive. I really enjoyed watching this, I love the dance. So I went out, look it up, and join with them. Human sin disfigures the whole creation, which groans with eager longing for God's redemption, and we confess our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in innocent of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. The Lord enrich you with his grace, and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble, and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offenses. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Today we're not going to say the Gloria, but rather we're going to sing it. And it's, uh, the link is there for us to join with the Tese community in singing Gloria. Gloria. Let us pray the prayer of the church for the tenth. Sunday of Trinity, Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And there is going to come and do the meetings for us. The Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis 45, verses 1 to 15. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, Make everyone leave my presence! So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so 
so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into slavery in Egypt. And now, do not be distressed. And do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years there has been famine in the land, and for the next five years there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, Lord of his entire household, and ruler of all Egypt. Now, hurry back to my father and say to him, This is what your son Joseph says. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, don't delay. You shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me, you, your children, and your grandchildren, your flocks and herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. You can see for yourselves, and so can my brother Benjamin, that it is really I who am speaking to you. Tell my father about all the honor accorded to me in Egypt and about everything you have seen. And bring my father down here quickly. Then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin embraced him, weeping. And he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterwards, his brothers talked with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is taken from Romans chapter 11, verses 29 to 32. For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Just as you who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound everyone over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me give you a moment to either 
preparing your hearts to receive the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, or to turn to the link and prepare your hearts by listening or singing, Oh, the mercy of God. The link is there for you. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, to give up his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel is taken from Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you. O Lord. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The sermon's title this morning is Unity Celebrated. I remember my church history lecturer saying that unity was one of the things lost at the Reformation. From the beginning of the church until the year 1054, there was only one church. Then there was the Orthodox and the Roman Catholic. At the Reformation, national churches developed. And today there is a plethora of churches, often without accountability. It is like the book of Judges, which says that everyone does what is right in their own eyes. God loves unity. We see this in our psalm for today, Psalm 133, a song of ascents of David, which was one of the psalms sung as people moved towards worship in Jerusalem. Unity is described as good and pleasant. True unity is both wholesome and feels good. The precious oil was what was used for ordination. Spiritual unity was based on the one God and his appointed representatives. There are some churches where the unity is based on a statement of doctrinal belief. Churches of historical traditions are based upon, as Israel, the person of the senior presbyter or priest, the bishop. True unity accepts differences and recognizes the right to interpret differently, but it does not easily separate. This is not to say that division is always wrong, but I would say that to have division thrust upon you because of a refusal of spiritual authorities to recognize what God is doing is different from choosing separation and division. 
Let me say that again. Division is not necessarily always wrong. But I would say there is a difference of having division thrust upon you because of a refusal of spiritual authorities to recognize what God is doing from those who choose separation and division. The other picture is the Jew of Hermon, which is a mountain in northern Israel and is often snow-covered. Unity is the like blessing poured out that enriches, nourishes, and brings blessing and happiness. And for us, the peace is an enactment of this unity. In a reading in Genesis 45 of Joseph, the reading is about unity being restored. Joseph has not always seemed wise in his words to his brothers. But here his dreams are being fulfilled. And as he opens up to his brothers, the ones who have betrayed and sold him, he's about restoring unity. I tend to think if he hadn't told his dreams, the brothers will not have recognized their fulfillment. Notice first of all his attitude to those who had sinned against him. We are told in verse 1, then Joseph could no longer control himself. And then in verse 2, he wept so loudly. The restoration process was not making a political truce. It was a matter of a heart who believes the relationship could be restored and renewed. I believe this is true of any type of relationship. In verse 3, when he tells his brothers who he really is, they are naturally terrified. The one they sold is now a man of immense power. How will he use his power? He says in verse 4, come close to me. And when they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. He didn't pretend that no wrong had happened. He tells the past for what it is, but he draws them close to him. He says that God is bigger than their wrongdoing. Verse 5, because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. Verse 7, that God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant. And verse 8, so that it was not you who sent me here, but God. God uses all things for his own ends. This was true of his beloved son, who also was sold, who also forgave, and who also brought healing and unity. Romans 8 and 28 tells us, that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. It is not that the circumstances are necessarily right, good or just, but God will use them. We have a wonderful Lord, and this includes what we are going through right now. In our New Testament reading, it was always talking to the Jews. Jews grew up thinking that they were God's people and no one else was. As Paul and Paul and Saul had stood for more, that more than most. Now, how are they to interpret the fact that God's claim was that God was including Gentiles? He argued for their inclusion as much as he fiercely uh, opposed it as a loyal Jew. He was proclaiming a new unity. He argued for the full and equal rights of Gentile Christians. The reference to Elijah is that God always had a remnant in the people of Israel. However much they wandered, there were always those who saw and who were faithful. They were called the remnant. If the Jews had all accepted Jesus as Messiah, perhaps there would have been the motivation to go to the Gentiles. There's very little in the New Testament about remnant. 
This was a new type of kingdom. There is also very little in the gospel, after the gospels, about kingdom. It is much more about the king. The key thing is that it's all about God. He chooses his methods, but his aim is all the same. He wants to bring the outsider in, all without distinction, and not all without exception. And the Gospel illustrates this. Jesus goes northwest from Galilee into what is now Lebanon, and a woman in here called a Canaanite, one completely beyond the, the wall. In Mark, she is called a Greek, a Syrophoenician woman. Phoenicians were an ancient Mediterranean, Mediterranean people who actually came to Spain. Jesus withdraws, something he does regularly and frequently, and she seems to be aware of Jesus and his role. And she cries out. This is in the perfect tense. She keeps on crying, not just saying once. And Jesus seems very insensitive. As often as the case, we don't see his face. I suspect he had a gentle smile. Jesus did not put her off, and she answers quite confidently and even cheekily. She disagrees with Jesus and said, not so. And he accepts it. You can see he was really about relationships rather than rules. And he heals her daughter. She believed that Jesus could make a difference, and he does. Even though she was an unexpected person to receive a blessing, and she is the only one to receive the accolade, great is your faith. The next best is a centurion. I have never found such faith even in Israel. But both are outsiders, and are brought in. This is what God does. The outsider becomes an insider. There is unity, very good and very pleasant. As a church, do we take this seriously? Do we know the names of all who are new to our church? Do we go out of our way to welcome the outsider, that the outsider might become an insider? Anything else is not Christ's way. I've been praying about what the Lord would say to me as we come into this new normality. I've talked and written a lot about the lockdown as being cloistered and being like a monastery, a place of prayer. And now I was asking God what He wanted my emphasis for my own life to be. And I felt Him say, I was being set free from this to love. In Latin, Set liberum es amoris. This is my desire. This is unity. Amen. We join together in the words of the Apostle Creed. This is what we need. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Devils are to come and lead us in our prayers. Let us Creator God, we pray for your troubled world. May all that encourages the people of the world in goodness, 
honesty and compassion, be blessed and grow. May all that encourages self-seeking and cruelty, prejudice and deceit, wither and be exposed as the unsatisfying rubbish that it is. May we learn from one another's cultures and respect one another's differences. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, in a world rocked by disease, we pray for the many people who have contracted coronavirus. Bring comfort to all those grieving the loss of loved ones who have died, and give peace to those worried, fearful, and uncertain as the virus spreads. We pray for governments and authorities who are developing strategies to contain and deal with the virus, and those in the health services who may be risking their own lives to care for sick patients. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you for the joy of human love and for all those among whom we live and work. We pray particularly for loved ones who concern us with their health, circumstances, or life direction. We pray for those among our friends and families who do not know you or whose faith has been shaken. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all whose backgrounds make belief in a loving God laughable or even terrifying. We pray for all who suffer mental or emotional anguish and those who despair. We pray for those facing another day of pain, another day of hunger, another day of fear, especially in the ongoing pandemic. We name in our hearts or out loud those that particularly concern us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, gather into your eternal kingdom all that have come to the end of this earthly life and rejoice to see you as you really are. We remember all whom we love but can no longer see and thank you for your overarching love and undergirding faithfulness to us. We remember in our hearts or out loud all those whom we love and have lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we remember with gratitude all who gave up so much to bring the good news to our countries and pray that with us it may continue to be spread until the whole earth knows of your truth and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you, Deborah. The Holy Communion has been recorded separately and has been added to this by Sarah. And uh, the two hymns, for the offer to him, we still my soul and to set us out to serve God. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. This part, right? We have the peace. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to Him through faith, heirs of the promise of the Spirit of peace. Amen. God of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning, you have created all things and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to declare your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord, as a mother tenderly gathers her children. You embraced a people as your own. When you turned away, when they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. And from them you raised up Jesus, our Savior, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends. Taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is a mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory. And we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with whom, by whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honor and glory and power. Be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink and remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer your souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. 